Welcome. <laughs> morning. <laughs> it's early in the morning and we're gearing up to go meet up with Ted Miller. We've never met Ted before, so we're really excited about it. We're going to do a little bit of shed hunting and look for a couple bucks that have disappeared off of his cameras. Like I said, we've never met Ted before and we look up to some of his you know, unique strategies. He's a big buck killing machine, so we're interested to see what we can learn from Ted. So let's go meet up with him. Isn't that it? That's the shed dog. <laughs> What's his name? Colt. I see. Nice. Yeah, too stupid out of the thing. Yeah, I got your spot. You're, you know, got a deer yeah. line there for a mirror. That's where I filmed that buck breeding the doe was right out oh, there. Oh, really? Right on that. bottom while they run all them does up here in the yeah. middle of nowhere away from the other bucks and I saw more deer out the window and you know I go sit in the stand all day come back and there'd be bucks chasing <laughs> does clear up here. I'll be there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're you're not gonna get around that when he walked by with the guts hanging out would have been about right there where that arrow is there. I see. And then I've had him on a, I've got a rug right up here that he's been on. I haven't seen him since then so I know he died. Yeah. You know, Cause I, that's where I spend all my time over in that country and mm -hmm. had a lot of trail cameras in there and never got him again. But And then there's another big buck that I'll show you here in a minute that was working these rubs you know basically all fall and I got him on this rub here and he had a big like knot mm -hmm. on his shoulder mm -hmm. and I never saw him again either so I'm oh, they might guessing, both be I'm in guessing there, huh? he's dead there somewhere mm -hmm. pretty close to so I figured that you'd wear wow. a brown duck coat maybe yeah <laughs> yeah that shirt's probably close enough huh yeah. to the <laughs> I was watching the videos and I was like, what's Ted gonna wear? You know me pretty well. <laughs> it's coming handy in all that multiplier rooms yeah. you're gonna be walking through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No doubt. Key to morning happiness. <laughs> In this, area. in this wood lot here, and then yeah. that little finger. Yeah, we will. Well, I thought we basically should all just kind of work down this side here to the okay. main draw. Yep. And then, like to say, that rubs over here, and then maybe all spread out, and then walk this side okay. hill that way. Yep. Maybe that makes sense. So we can just kind of spread out and walk down through here, and once you get to the main ditch, we'll just kind of meet up again, right in where the main ditches or somewhere. Yeah, sounds good. Let's go have a look. Well, it, this is a rub that the buck actually walked by with his looked like he'd been gored and his guts were kind of hanging out that one side. This is the rub that he actually walked by and then that eight pointer come up and started working the rub right behind him. Which direction were they coming from? Well, right they're, here? They're coming from behind us and coming this way and you know I'm just presuming that buck is dead in this area somewhere pretty close you know. I don't, I don't know. But We've already but, found a couple of dead ones but yeah. not him doesn't appear. Yeah. Another rub that got a lot of activity on it. I mean, it's it's uh, I don't know, loose a little bit, so they can knock it around. And you know, I just 
kind of left a few limbs on it there to something different but you brought these in too though right yeah and, i just dug these just cut them and set them for there wasn't a already a ideally a live tree that you can you can attach the rub to otherwise a buck can get his antlers under here and pull that and then he'll just pull the post right out of the ground if it isn't you know isn't i think it's interesting what you do with these twist ties too like you found a post here that's got that yeah that kind of scrape limb that comes off and then you just tie in yeah that's just a great bind there uh -huh. and, uh, i either use a great bind or a red oak limb or whatever seems to be the main thing and i kind of started doing more great vines this year it just seems like they like them as well so you know i i think 2010 was probably the first year that i put up a horizontal rub and i just discovered it by observing elk out in yellowstone national park and and i just got following bulls out there and they seemed like they gravitated towards down tree limbs and just had a preference for rubbing on something that was laying horizontal to the ground or whatever and I thought you know just wondered if a whitetail buck would do the same thing and come back and set one up and had him use it the first one that I ever set up so it just kind of progressed from there and just experiment year to year and kind of try to figure out what a buck likes and basically just trying to give him everything he wants in one spot like I got the licking branch a scrape and a rub all in one one area and it what I'm trying to do is just distract him so you can get a shot at him while he's standing in one spot instead of just walking right by under your tree you just I would say the common theme that I've seen at least so far is this third rub we've come to and they're all right here either in the bedding area or they're right next to the bedding area yeah that and I've kind of gradually moved them further into cover I mean I mean they'll hit them anywhere but the it's basically they're not gonna use them if the buck's not there like on a food plot you can set them there but you know 90 percent of your activity is going to be after dark while you're not there so I've just gradually moved them further back in cover to get daylight video and and a daylight setup is in a bedding area where the buck's going to be is why I've moved them deeper into cover. I like to use scotch pine on my horizontal limb just on the count of I would say it's the ideal rubbing tree that a buck could find in this area. I mean obviously in this area there's not there's not any pine you know an occasional cedar or something that'll receive some activity but but i've just given the buck his ideal rubbing tree which is a real sappy scotch pine limb and uh, a buck you know just can't hardly walk by that without walking over there and no. and rubbing on it you know i mean that's just in their nature to rub on a real sappy soft bark that'll rub off easy and uh got a lot of pine scent to it you know I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure why they like them so well but I know they like them and uh, how often do you replace them I replace them every year is a lot of mine I'll put up the first of October just on that account of when the bucks will start doing their rubbing and they'll stay fresh I would say into the middle part of November but after that they'll they'll dry out and uh, you know a buck is less apt to work them when they're dry and then like this limb here after it dries here all fall or winter i mean it'll it'll just be like a dead tree and bucks don't like to rub dead trees so you have to replace it every year is what i'm saying i guess i think a lot of people probably put them you know they tend to say they're going to put them up in august you know or as soon as the bucks go out of velvet well that that's a whole month where the limb is sitting there drying out and when you really want them to be ideal is the latter part of October that's yeah. when the bucks do 
most of the rubbing so you want the limb to be in ideal shape the latter part of October so that's why I wait to put them out basically the first of October. This horizontal rub location and tree stand of Ted's is located right in this hub location in the middle of bedding and right next to bedding. You can see trail number one Ted and Gregor walking down. Here's the rub. You've got trail number two right there. Trail number three coming right from the tree stand itself, which is in that hedge tree. Trail number four right here. And then trail number five right here coming around the base of that hedge tree. So he's got five trails coming in here to this horizontal rub. And I would assume that these were all intersecting here before he put the rub in, but adding the rub into that tree stand location just makes this spot that much better to hunt. And he comes in from that way, the road's only a few hundred yards away. So he comes in with minimal intrusion, slides into the middle of the bedroom, and uh, obviously the trail cam videos speak for themselves. These bucks are using these rubs in daylight, and a lot of them. Let's go see what we can find. This is uh, Ted's camera set up here. He's just got it like in this little teepee of deadfalls to kind of hide it. And the camera's pointing back at the rub. And the stand is right beyond that to get the hunter in the stand behind him. It's a really cool setup. really that fun. <laughs> That's big boy. He was saying that that deer's been around since the one he shot this year with the gun. Mm -hmm. I don't know, however old that is, like a hundred. Yeah. Like six or seven though, I think. Sweet. Well, he's still alive. I thought he was dead. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know we have these sheds. We're gonna try to. We're gonna try to check them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, way to go, buddy. <laughs> Congratulations, you did a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're right next to each other. Wow. Not too far from the road, right after we kind of left you guys down the bottom there. Uh, so, uh, I didn't get any better than that. <laughs> you know a buck you thought was dead is alive. Uh, yep. That's the one that you thought, or that was alive when, yeah, when the one the that you shot up. this year was alive, yeah. so it's a super old one, right? Yeah. He's not dead. <laughs> that's a, that's a He's not that, dead. That had the bump on his shoulder there that I thought was dead. You know, on the rope there. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <Yes. laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's, that's we maybe made weird. it like we were like a hundred yards from the road, probably. Yeah. And uh, Jake. I hear like it's so windy. I just hear like, ah, ah, ah. You know, I was like, well, I suppose they found something. And I get over there, and he's got one in his hand. Then he pulls up the other one and saw that. And I was like, that's that one. <laughs> 